Asian Peace Builder Scholarship Program is a shared initiative of the Nippon Foundation, the University for Peace, and Ateneo de Manila University. The main objective of the dual degree, dual campus program is to train young Asian professionals to become peace building practitioners, ready to take up leading positions in organizations across the globe. In particular, the program serves to strengthen the representation of Asian professionals in the field of peace building. Asian Peace Builders of 2019, APS Cohort 12, conducted their capstone projects in various parts of Asia. Seven group projects were designed in the context of humanitarian work and conflict transformation. Central to these peace building efforts were the people's participation in the implementation phase. Cambodia has been through genocide for almost three years and the genocide killed more than two million people during that time and until now people still suffer from it, especially the trauma that the survivors have. So in our society as a post war generation, as a youth, and right now I am a student here at Ateneo de Manila University, I think we should do something for the communities as the Samrauna community the site that we chose for our project have also suffered from genocide and this is what the community needs. They don't have any official documentary that shows the efforts or work that they have been engaged in restorative justice. So it is our application, I can say, to work for the community, with the community and the project is by the community. It is very important to work with the community, by community, and for the community. In this sense, I mean, we need to take care of the community even though we conduct a research there or implement a project there. The community is the respondents, and we work for the community, not to harm the community. So it is very important to take this into account, and everything that you do to the community, make sure that it will benefit to the community. In our project, we also engage with the community since the beginning to the end. And we respect their decision, whether they would like to involve, they would like to publish, or they would like to remove everything that we have done. So even though we cannot establish anything, we still keep and keep respecting their decisions as a respondent. Yeah, first of all, I guess one of the most urgent issues in the world is the refugee, stateless people, and the migrants. When I was in UPS Costa Rica, I took many courses regarding human rights and also the refugee. Then we decided that we should address the respond to this issue in the field, in the community. That's why we chose the, the migrants, stateless people, and the refugees as our target population. I can say there are two things as the important learning from the field when we implemented our graduation project. So first one is flexibility. Even though we set the project purpose and goals and the plan, we had the many changes in the field. So that's why I felt that we need to be flexible all the time during project implementation. And second, in order for us to show respect or trust building, so we have to understand their culture, their behavior, and their social norm. So we have to understand who they are at the first level. Then, and also we have to explain who we are. Then if we can understand each other, I think we can build the mutual understanding, respect, and the trust. Our group addressed the issue of the Filipino comfort women who were the victims of the wartime sexual violence by the Japanese military during World War II. 
The Filipino comfort women, Honduras, have been fighting for justice for a long time. However, they are often just labeled as the victims of the sexual violence or even stigmatized due to the social misunderstanding and their other aspects as whole human beings are often ignored. In addition, most of the Lolas are already over their 90s and only two of them are still showing their experiences. The opportunities to listen to the legacies of the Lolas from themselves are getting more and more limited. Therefore, we have decided to implement this storybook project. We have interviewed three daughters and a granddaughter of the former Filipino comfort women, and they shared various aspects of the Lolas. Aside from their wartime experiences, how they treated their children, what they taught to their children and grandchildren, what they like to do, how they have coped with their traumatic experiences, and how those daughters and granddaughters supported their daily lives and the activities to seek for justice. Those interviews were precious opportunities for us to learn the family members' perspectives on their mothers and their grandmothers. We summarized these amazing stories in this storybook in English and Tagalog. By utilizing this book, we hope to contribute to change our readers' perception of comfort women issues and ultimately, we hope to contribute to restore the dignity of the Lolas or Filipino comfort women. Our project site, Hanoi, Vietnam, is ranked as the worst polluted cities in the world. Recently, the eco-friendly products are getting attention as an approach to mitigate such environmental issues. Fortunately, our APS friend introduced her friend who is running the shop which is selling eco-friendly products in Hanoi. This is a good networking and this is the beginning of our project. Through our project, we have two key learnings, potential and limitation of small projects like us. We realize that small projects like us can make small impact on the community. For example, we could make bridge between producers, customers, and the shop. But at the same time, there is a limitation of small project. For example, we could approach to those who are already interested in environmental issues, but we could not approach to those who are not interested in environmental issues or those who are not familiar with this topic. One of the pervading social issues that uh, our project has tried to uh, address is deforestation through supporting the project of Environmental Studies Institute of Nearing College because currently they're in the last phase of their 25-year like, uh, reforestation program in Barangay Laiban. So through our project, uh, through a proper value chain analysis of the current ecotourism venture in Laiban. Uh, one of our goal is to create a more inclusive ecotourism venture wherein like different stakeholders, specifically small time service providers such as like tour guides, the women and the sari sari to store owner could be integrated into the wider ecotourism value chain wherein they could actually benefit from it. Okay, so one thing that I learned from this project is very, uh, it is very important for us to um, communicate with uh, local people, like uh, uh, not only like interview or like a focus group discussion, but also it's more about like how we communicate or how we spend time with them. So by doing that, they also like trust us, like more like a personal connection. So we did a youth interfaith training um, and conference in Mandalay, Myanmar. And the reason why we chose that topic in that area is because um, through research we learned that even though uh, people of different faiths live in one city together, um, they don't have enough meaningful interaction, which means they don't talk about their faiths in, in depth. And 
they don't talk about their similarities and differences that they have, um, especially uh, the youth generation. So we decided um, to select interfaith as the topic and also Mandalay, uh, Myanmar as our area of project implementation. In my opinion, one important learning point that we can take from the project is the importance of communicating, engaging, and working with local partners and local people. This is true when we did our project. We have a lot of helpful volunteers, participants, uh, implementing partners, and also the University of Mandalay who helped us a lot. And after this our program, after we graduate, I believe that all of us will be a peace builder outside of our country and we have to understand that the local staff, the local people know best of the context. So we have to really trust them and work with them to make a meaningful impact uh, toward peace. Amid the prolonged world refugee crisis, the government of Japan has announced its expansion of third country resettlement program starting 2020. However, the issues surrounding the integration of refugees in Japan continue to be a concern. The centralized mechanism of the resettlement program, lack of active support and coordination by municipalities, and absence of a two-way integration process are some factors hindering successful integration. Thus, it is significant to identify problems regarding integration and to create welcoming communities. Setting a vision as promoting a two-way process of integration in the long term, this project created a welcome kit model for future resettled refugees together with Karen resettled refugee families in Japan. This project employed a community-based participatory approach which consisted of the following three activities. 1. Survey of municipalities. 2. Stakeholder visits. And finally, community dialogue sessions. Through these activities, the target user of the welcome kit was determined Community-based local settlement supporters who play a crucial role in enhancing integration of resettled refugees in their host cities will be the recipients of the welcome kit. The kit is designed to be customized to capture peculiarities of each host city. The welcome kit also calls for collaboration among various stakeholders and awareness-raising initiatives within the given community which, in the long term, realizes a vision of promoting a two-way process of integration. The path to peace may not be easy, but there are people who commit themselves and their resources in the hopes of positive change. Let us continue working together to build sustainable and inclusive peace.